In this demonstration, I'll be showing you how to use the Power OLAP, OLAP Read, and OLAP Read Write functions from an Excel worksheet. The Power OLAP functions in Excel for using Read and Read Write uh, use standard Excel functionality, however, with the capabilities to write back to Power OLAP. <clears throat> the Read Write function is the most flexible to use in Excel, however, there are issues that, that arise with flexibility. Let's go further in detail into these. First, let me describe the difference between a read and a read-write. An OLAP read-write fun function can be used to first read data from a Power OLAP cube when you recalculate, and then when a user types into the cell that contains a read-write formula, the value will actually be written back to the Power OLAP cube. An OLAP read formula, however, performs a direct read from Power OLAP. If you type into a, cell, this, a cell that contains just an OLAP read formula, you will simply overwrite the formula using normal Excel functionality. Let's also talk a little bit about the performance difference between those two, Apple, two implementations. Due to some limitations in Excel, the OLAP read write formula actually requires multiple calculations inside of an Excel workbook. <clears throat> Why does this happen? In Excel functionality, based on its rules of cell calculation, an individual cell must finish calculation before Excel will go on to the next cell. This is a continuous loop based on an order of precedence that's defined by Excel. When you slice from Power OLAP into Excel, using a very large area of data, many, many functions can be inserted into an area. This could create an OLAP uh, spreadsheet that uses significant amounts of, of read or read-write formulas. In order to optimize the performance or the communication interface between the Power OLAP formulas and the model or the cube or the server that's calculating the engine, each call to a, or each calculate of an individual cell could not possibly go to the server and all the way back and then go to the next function to the server and all the way back with a large amount of data and perform adequately. Uh, the communication protocol between Excel and the calculation engine possibly residing on an external MDB server would be so slow the user would not be able to finish their calculation. So to work around this with the read-write formula, <clears throat> the Power Excel add-ins actually calculate once, determine what cells and what points have read-writes in them, pass the entire request as one request to the Power OLAP server, query, calculate, and get the entire set of values calculated from all the read-write formulas, and returns those values back to Excel. In order to populate those results now, Power OLAP tells Excel to recalculate a second time. The Excel add-ins understand that the data has already been queried and returned in a in-memory space. <clears throat> the add-ins then interpret that data and on the next calculation, when a read-write occurs, instead of bundling that up as a request to Power OLAP, Power OLAP add-ins simply return the result of that large calculation. Therefore, on the first calculation, Power OLAP add-ins in Excel accumulate the areas that need to be calculated. When that finishes, that entire set is sent to the cube or the server to be calculated. When those return, Power OLAP add-ins in Excel then tell Excel to recalculate again. On that calculation, when each cell calculates, the value is immediately returned and inserted into that particular cell. That's the functionality behind the OLAP read-write. The OLAP read function does not function this way. OLAP read function for every OLAP read will make an individual call to the server. So depending on what you're trying to do, you need to determine whether the OLAP read or OLAP read write formula is what you want to do. If you need to use these formulas and you need to use large, large numbers of formulas, or if you need to write data back to a Power OLAP cube within your Excel spreadsheet, OLAP read write is certainly the way to go. If you don't want Excel to be doing multiple calculations and you only need to return a small number of cells or values from Power OLAP and you don't need those values to be edited or written back to Power OLAP, OLAP read is a, per, is a good option or a good choice. So let's start out by creating a slice in Excel using OLAP read write. I'm first going to go to edit options and I'm going to select the read write option. Select OK. And in Excel, 
go to or Power OLAP, go to the Slice Worksheet menu. <clears throat> this now creates a sheet in Excel. This now creates a sheet in Excel with the OLAP read write formulas. If you click on an individual cell, you'll see that there's an OLAP read write formula in each cell in the particular region that we sliced. <clears throat> Let's look at what gets passed to this. Looking at the parameters, we can see that the OLAP read write uses several of the references inside of the Excel worksheet to calculate its value. Using this example, the first parameter is the database that the current sheet is connected to. The second parameter is the cube. And then the rest of the parameters are simply the member names for the point that you want to calculate. It's very important to remember that these members must be in the exact same order as the dimensions in the cube, the default order. To determine the default order, go into Power OLAP, do a slice on your cube, and simply start with your pages your columns and your rows and that will give you the default order of you, the dimensions in your cube. So example I'll do new future year model and here I can see that my first dimension is actual versus budget, second accounts, third regions, and fourth months. In the OLAP read write I can see that they are in the same order. C3 is my actual versus budget, C4 is accounts, B8 is my region, and B9 or A9 is my uh, month. Now, if we look at each individual cell along here, we can see that the OLAP read write is actually referencing other cells. The cells that they're referencing are to the left and above for the current value that we're trying to calculate. So if I select anywhere in this grid, I will see that this cell is referencing USA, which is in the exact same column as this cell. It's referencing May, which is in the exact same row as this. Anywhere you click in this grid of data points, you'll see the same exact thing. What is this doing? This is telling Power OLAP how to calculate each point in the grid. Let's now recalculate the sheet. As you can see, the values go from numbers to a pound recalc and back to numbers again. This is the action of Power OLAP performing a first and second calculation. On the first recalculate, the values are, are bunched up, sent over to Power OLAP. On the way back, the values are returned as numbers. Let's see about editing capabilities. The Power OLAP add-in is smart to understand what an OLAP read-write formula is and what it means to type into an OLAP read-write formula. Let me go into April for Canada and type in a value of 2000. Normally what will happen there is you will overwrite the value in your cell using normal Excel functions. However, as you can see, the OLAP read write function still exists in this cell. However, we now have a value of 2000 being displayed. If I recalculate, I can see that the 2000s actually accumulated into their aggregate totals. Having said this, what happens is these values are actually written back to our OLAP. They are then accumulated and aggregated into their parent members. Other things that are more flexible that you can do with OLAP read write. <clears throat> there is no requirement on OLAP read write for the values to be in a table format as we can see here. So for example, I can take this value for April in Canada and I can move its cell anywhere on the sheet I want. I can have that value representing here. And as you can see, the elements still reference Canada and April. However, the data point is not the intersection of these. I may want to reference this over here. My Canada value for April. There's no requirement that says that this cell has to exist at any intersection. It simply has to have a valid qualified reference to its members for each dimension. When I recalculate,
When I recalculate, you can see that the value at my intersection is actually now updating, just as if it was in the grid. So as I hit F9, we can see that this is calculating based on its parents. In this instance, I actually set it up to be Canada for March. I can move this to any location on the screen, and it will function appropriately. Therefore, there is no requirement that these cells be in the middle of a grid, much like unlike the OLAP table and OLAP pivot functions. Now, let me change the OLAP read write into an OLAP read formula. The value that returned is exactly the same. However, as you can see, the OLAP read function is not changing to a pound recalc. That's because the OLAP read function gets and returns its value immediately on execution. It does not buffer up the request and return the results. Therefore, the OLAP read formula can be used immediately as a value.